Stream right is back again. Stream plays as I didn't know. I broke everything new again. Everything that I know. Hey! Sorry guys, just vamping a little bit with some extreme ways by Moby. The theme of the Jason Bourne trilogy. And if Jason Bourne were here, I know he'd tell me that I have to review the next episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Because let's face it, I've had some trouble. I was chilling out with the crew in the schoolyard and things got a bit out of hand. I was chilling out far too long. Spent too long chilling out. It was just too much chill. And it was very out in the schoolyard with my chums. Chums? Not chumly. I don't want to give you the impression that I'm friends with that guy. Because let's face it, who could manage it? But no, I was chilling out in the crew with the schoolyard. No, I was not in the crew. I don't want you to think that I'm part of some crew or that I was inside a number of people that constituted a crew. That was not what happened. But I was chilling out and it just went on too long. And now I'm back to review GX. So yeah, welcome back to, uh, to you guys and to this series, which is a show where I watch an individual episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, the dub thereof, every week and give you my response, my reaction, my emotional... Uh, retaliation to it. That's a good that's a good way of putting it. It's a retaliation because let's face it GX attacks you with a lot of bad jokes. So I should respond with some equally bad ones. But yeah, last time we left off, I believe we just done the the episode with Chumley's dad. Chumley's dad. Oh, dreamboat. I miss him. This show now has a Chumley's dad shaped hole in it, and I'm going to chill out within that hole with the crew, and it'll never be filled, not even by Chumley. Who could fill that hole? Nobody. Nobody's buff enough. Nobody has the unsightly arm hair to do it. Except maybe me, I guess. But yeah, I don't want to dwell too long on the introduction. I want to get right back in to talking about Yu-Gi-Oh GX because I know you guys I've been gagging for it a little bit. I've left you guys in the lurch for at least a month, uh, I want to say, just because I had my own problems to deal with. But I'm back, and I'm ready to talk shit about children's card games. It's not even a good skill. It's not even, I'm not even good at it. So yeah, let's dive right into episode 10 of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, entitled Tag Team Trial. Play up. Part one. And the episode starts off with Crowler just sort of walking the halls of Duel Academy. And he's thinking to himself, oh, this place is just infested with Slifer Reds. It's unfortunate for him that he got a job as a teacher and also that students exist. If one or the other happened, it would be okay, but not both. Oh, I'm a teacher and I've got to teach people. F and seeing all these Slifer Red students reminds Crowler that Jade and Yuki exists, and it upsets him. We've all been there. Chaz shows up and asks Professor Crowler if he can be in the tag duel against Jaden, and Crowler says no, he's not taking any chances this time. He's got some professionals. And Chaz says, well, Crowler, if you change your mind, Chaz is the first in line. Crowler, I'm still free. Chaz it up with me. He doesn't say that, but he f***ing should have. Chaz it up, the musical, now on Broadway. Does Alexander Hamilton chaz it up at any point in the Hamilton musical? No? Then what's the point? Crowler says if Jaden Yuki loses here, he'll be expelled from Duel Academy, which is why Crowler has brought in the best tag duelists in the world. And actually really excited to see who he's got because, I mean, it could be anybody. But never mind the greatest tag team in the world, it's time for the greatest theme song in the world. Also also known as the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX English theme. And I've got to point out that apparently I've been making a blunder and the lyrics for the song are chilling out with the crew in the schoolyard, finding trouble, never working too hard. And I've been thinking never looking too hard was what they actually said. Because I'll be honest, it makes more sense to me that they'd go finding trouble, never looking too hard. Because if they're not looking too hard for trouble, it means they find it easily because they're, they're a bunch of gangsters. I don't know. It, I don't know. I know I'm wrong, but it just sounds better to me. I don't know. How about you? What do you think it says? I mean, it is clearly never working too hard because that applies 100% to the characters, but... I just like never looking too hard more. It's my head cannon for the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX theme. Petition to change the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX English theme lyrics to what I think it is. And then after the opening theme is finished, we go to the Slifer Red Dorm, which I've just realized is overlooking a cliff that falls into the ocean. And they did it that way so that if Chumley ever is desperate for a midnight snack and he goes out the wrong door thinking it's the pantry, he'll just fall to his death. The most exercise he'll have gotten ever, falling to his death. Burns a lot of calories. I should know, I fall to my death at least once a day. And look at my trim figure. Chumley's on top of his bunk watching Jaden and Cyrus go through their decks, and he asks them how they can be so 
calm. I mean, it is pretty easy to be calm when you're not the kind of person who has heart attacks every hour on the hour, like clockwork. Jaden says, what's there to not be calm about? It's just another card game. And Chumley says, well, if you lose this one, you'll be on the next bus out of here. And Jaden quite correctly points out that they're on an island, so obviously a bus wouldn't work. Yeah, I mean, having a bus that goes to and from an island is kind of ludicrous, as opposed to every other completely feasible plot point that has occurred in this show so far. Watch Chumley be 100% right, and there is actually an underwater bus that goes to and from Dual Academy. I fully expect it now. Chumley says that when Jaden and Cyrus inevitably get expelled, they need to give him their meal cards, because who's going to eat their grilled cheeses when they're gone? He's fat! Cyrus has a moment of reflection where he thinks about how he lost in his last duel and was just as bad as his brother always told him he would be. But then he tells himself that he has to get Zane out of his head and he has to believe in himself. Believe in myself. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Believe in myself. Believe in myself. Believe in myself. I believe in myself, Jaden. I believe that Cyrus and Jaden can win this duel. I believe that Monster Reborn lets you just win another song from Chaz It Up the Musical. Chumley wishes Jaden and Cyrus luck in their duel, and Jaden is surprised because he assumed that Chumley would just want the extra grilled cheeses, and Chumley says he'd rather have them as friends than grilled cheese. Wow, Chumley prefers your friendship to food? Secretly, it's actually because Chumley knows that if Jaden and Cyrus are lured into a false sense of security, he can cook them while they're sleeping. Human cheese is the tastiest form of grilled cheese, after all. What? In the duel arena, a crowd has gathered to watch the tag duel. Player. And all four genders are being represented, including red, blue, yellow, and girl. And there is a hilarious announcer on the PA system, making this all sound really dramatic. Listen to him. The tag duel will begin in just a few moments. And remember, these are test conditions. This is a sudden expulsion match. It's like having Michael Buffer at your GCSEs. Imagine going in to get an A-star on Latin and you suddenly hear, let's get ready to rumble. Bastion is of course there with his posh head face head. And Alexis sits down next to Bastion and the entire Yu-Gi-Oh! GX fandom is sat on the edge of their seat with bated breath because they've been waiting for these two characters to meet for so long. You're Bastion Misawa, a friend of Jaden's, right? You know, Alexis just sounds like a visual novel character that has escaped the confines of her software. Bastion says, I guess you can say I'm Jaden's friend, when in actuality, he is a guy that sometimes chimes in on Jaden's nonsense, telling him how wrong he is. If that is a friendship, then I'm best buds with everyone on Twitter. Alexis asks Bastion if he's heard the rumor that Crowler has booked some professional tag duelists Player. for this match. Alexis, you smart, you gotta stop reading them dirt sheets. It just ruins it for everyone else who wants to be surprised. We see a shot of Chaz sitting in the audience and he's got dozens of empty seats surrounding him. He's completely alone. I love it. I love seeing Chaz just on his Todd, just completely alone. Having said that, it's very likely that Chaz just booked out that entire section so that he could sit and grumble to himself the entire duel and not worry about people telling him not to. Look at him by himself, he's on his Todd. Jaden says the acoustics in here are great. Okay, are you planning a concert after this? What, what are you on about? And Cyrus agrees and asks that if Jaden's Echo can be his tag team partner. No, don't encourage that. The last thing we want is to hear Jaden's voice twice in succession during a card game. We have to hear it enough as is. Chaz grumbles to himself that it should be him taking down Jaden, but as long as someone else gets to do it and his best friend sitting next to him says, you're right, Chaz. Oh no, wait, he's on his Todd. Jaden and Cyrus get on the duel platform and what the f what is that? What is that? What is that? What are those things? What are those weird creatures just sort of sat watching in the Duel Arena audience? They, they look all wrong. They look like a bunch of weird doll creatures. Like weird voodoo dolls that have been posed to look like people. But are clearly not people. What is that? What am I looking at? Oh, no. Oh, I don't like that at all. What? Oh, oh, make it go away. Let, let's move on. Oh, what are they, the ghosts of mannequins that have died? What, what are they? What the f are you? When Chumley arrives, and I've never been quite so happy to see Chumley in my life because at least he's not some sort of weird, perverted monster mannequin thing creature that will murder me. Chumley's out of breath from running over, and he says, I thought running was healthy. 
You know where I'm going with this. He's fat! Zane is also watching the duel from high above, and when Cyrus sees him, he reacts like he's a high school girl who just saw the Beatles in their prime. Time to see if you belong here, or on the next plane out of here. Zane! Zane? Unfortunately, cut from the dub of the episode is a shot of Cyrus throwing his underwear at Zane. It's a real shame it's gone, because it really adds to Cyrus's character. Crowler's upsetting crotch is here to introduce the tag team. Play up. And it's the Paradox Brothers! Oh yeah! Oh, and they jump around and do all the flippy stuff that they did in the show, and it, it, oh, I'm happy. And then Jaden and Cyrus ruin everything by saying they've never heard of the Paradox Brothers. Wait a minute, you know who the Pharaoh is, and you know about the Shadow Games, but you don't know f***ing Paradox Brothers. Ah, I don't accept that. Crowler snarkily explains that the last guy these two dueled was a young man named Yugi something. And I get that he's trying to make Jaden and Cyrus nervous because they dueled Yugi, but they lost to Yugi. So how is that supposed to be intimidating? It's really not. Para and Docs both look at each other like they both just farted, but neither one wants to admit whose fart is whose. Alexis says she studied these guys. They're some sort of card game mercenaries. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, they're, they're meant to be card game mercenaries. They are card game mercenaries. <laughs> Can't say it with a straight face. And then she says they're meant to be the best tag duelists Player. in the world. They got beat by f***ing Joey. Bastion says that he'd put Jaden's odds of winning this duel at 1 in 50. Oh yeah, well I'd put your odds of getting laid at 1 in f*** off. Chumley says this is not licious. Which is obviously just a nonsense catchphrase, but at least it adds more to the conversation than whatever Bastion brings to the table. The Paradox Brothers bring their trademark rhyming styles to the game. Enough with the pleasantries. And now on with the duel. We didn't come here to talk. We came to destroy you. A bit of a sh** poem, guys. Chancellor Shepard delivers once again the best line read of the episode. Crowler. Don't you think this is a bit much? I don't know, don't you think that line read was a bit much? Crowler argues that the Paradox Brothers can't leave now, they've come so far. And Shepard says, well, you're paying for their travel expenses. Well, that's what you should expect when you're dealing with the card game mercenaries. Sorry, I can't do it. Hey, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a travel agent. Hey, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a bank clerk. Hey, what do you do for a living? I'm a card game mercenary. <laughs> Chancellor Shepard lets Jaden decide if they're gonna duel these guys, and Jaden accepts, saying that they couldn't even beat male pattern baldness. Jaden, you are not the person to be making fun of other people's f***ing hair. Let he who is without stupid anime protagonist hair cast the first spell card. Jaden sees Cyrus panicking and tells him to just breathe and they'll get through this. Oh yeah, breathing. The thing that The Undertaker wasn't able to do while you scoffed at him, Jaden. Just saying, a man asphyxiated to death and Jaden didn't give a shit. I think we should be talking about that more. The tag duel Player. starts and Jaden says, get your games on. Jaden, there aren't multiple games happening here. You don't have to alter your catchphrase like that. It's just one single tag Player. game. Cyrus summons his gyroid in attack mode and Para summons his Jirai Gummo in attack mode, which is a fucking spider and I can't stand spiders. Get it the fuck away. Don't, no, no, no. Tell me when it's gone. Is it gone? F*** you! Tricking me like that, I'm doing a video for you. Jaden summons elemental hero Bastina f*** in de mode. And then Doc summons Kaiser Seahorse in attack mode. Cyrus thinks to himself about how the duel's gonna play out. Alright, if I know dueling like I think I know dueling- Oh, he started saying it duel. That means Bastion's rubbing off on him. That ain't good, he's a bad influence. You're gonna stop being a posh sh head, Cyrus. Don't do it, it's not worth it. Dox activates his tribute doll. Oh, it's another weird doll creature. I feel like this episode is proliferated with them. Ah, I don't like it. Dox sacrifices Jirai Gumo, f that spider, in order to summon Kaze Jin. Which, if you know your duel monsters lore, is one third of the trio to summon Gate Guardian. I only know that because I watch too much Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's pretend that's an education. Bastion remarks on the Paradox Brothers' strategy. He sacrificed his brother's monster to summon a better one for the team. Now that's tag dueling. Would you mind trying not to sound quite so impressed with them? Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. These guys are the best tag duelists in the world maybe five seconds ago. Docs draws and plays Dark Designator, and I'm already completely losing track of who's f 
fucking turn it is. What's going on? And Dark Designator allows Dox to call out the name of a card, and if it's in Para's deck, he gets to put it in his hand. So Dox calls out Sanger of the Thunder, which apparently is on top of Para's deck already. So he just called out the monster that Para was gonna draw anyway. I mean, I guess it gives him a slight advantage, but overall, it seems like it was completely unnecessary to me. But hey, who am I to tell the card game mercenaries what to do? <laughs> Jaden runs down the status of the duel. Okay, monster roll call. I got my Burstinatrix chilling in defense mode. Chilling in defense mode. Yes, that is how he describes it. That is my new AFK message and my voicemail. Sorry, mine can't come to the phone right now. He's busy chilling in defense mode. I'm recording that right now. Here we go. How do I do this? I'm sorry, but Martin can't come to the phone right now because he's busy chilling in defense mode. But please leave a message after the beep. Thank you. Hey. This video series changes lives. You just saw it happen. Jaden says that the Paradox Brothers two level seven monsters are no good, including that one green thing that he's never seen before. Cyrus summons Steamroid, which is a steam train monster and not a steam-based treatment for your hemorrhoids. Cyrus fuses his two roid monsters into Steam Gyroid and then attacks Para directly as he no longer has his Jirai Gumo. But then Dox uses Kazajin's special ability to reduce the damage they take to zero. And I do feel the need to point out that Jaden says that he didn't know who the green monster was, Kazajin, but then he reacts as if he knew what Kazajin's special ability was. So he didn't know the monster a minute ago, but now he knows everything there is to know about it. What, has he got an iPhone in his pocket is just Googling the monsters as he goes? Jaden gives Cyrus some words of encouragement, which is actually really kind of sweet because it's nice to see that side of Jaden actually caring for his friend and not just being like, gotta win. <laughs> Para plays Monster Reborn and brings back Jirai. F you, f you, f you, f you. No, 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 no. I'm not looking. You guys will tell me when the spider is gone, right? Oh, it's gone? Okay. Did I hurt you? Para plays another tribute doll and uses it to bring out, guess what? The other thing from Gate Guardian, what's it called? <laughs> Right, Suejin, I knew that, didn't have to Google it. So now the Paradox Brothers have Kazajin, Suejin, and Sanga of the Thunder on the field, causing Bastion to say, Now I place those odds at 500 to 1. What are the odds of you being quiet? Uh. Oh, well I put those odds at about mm, to 1. This comment actually causes Bastion to shut the f*** up, making Alexis now best character. Yes, she filled the hole that Chumley's dad left behind somehow. Which means that I now require fan art of Alexis all buff with hair all over her arms. I made a mistake saying that out loud. The Paradox Brothers summon Gate Guardian to the field, who pisses all over Steam Gyroid, literally. Crowler is watching the duel jubilantly, thinking to himself that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link, and Cyrus is definitely the weak link in this chain. Yeah, I've got a question. What kind of sh chain only has two links? Probably a sh one. Hence it being sh Crowler says that Cyrus would be the weak link in a plate of sausages, which causes Chumley to leap onto the duel field and start trying to devour Cyrus whole. Jaden draws polymerization and says, it's time to go to work. Which from the guy who, when it is time to get work done, tends to just fall asleep and do nothing, doesn't bode well. Jaden summons elemental hero Clayman and then delivers yet another classic Jaden line read. And next I play... Ha. Nothing quite says triumphant noise like ha. Jaden makes elemental hero Clayman f elemental hero Bastina f and then summons Rampart Blaster to the field. Sorry, much like Jaden, I have to Google what monster it is every time I see a new one. Jaden really knows how to convey the strength of his new monster. Rampart Blaster! He's bad. No, Jaden, that was bad. And Rampart Soldier looks like some sort of rejected Warhammer 40,000 Space Marine design. But he does have a helmet with flames on it. So I guess we can deduce that he is indeed 
bad. Wubba says bad like flames on helmet. Cyrus points out that Master Blaster's attack and defense aren't enough to deal with Gate Guardian. And Jaden says, well, that's what his special ability's for. Is it special ability also bad? He's bad. Jaden explains that his Rampart Blaster can attack directly even while in defense mode. And so he attacks the Paradox Brothers with missiles and their life points drop to 7,000. But then Dox equips Fairy Meteor Crush to the Gate Guardian, which means that whenever the Gate Guardian attacks a defense position monster, the difference between their attack and defense will be taken out of Jaden and Cyrus's life points. And then Cyrus activates Mystical Space Typhoon to destroy Fairy Meteor Crush. Once again, Mystical Space Typhoon, one of the most underratedly awesome names for a card. But then Para activates his trap card, Judgment of Anubis, which negates the effect of Mystical Space Typhoon. And in Para's words, downgrades it to a cool summer breeze. Joke's on you, Para, because the name Mystical Space Cool Summer Breeze is still f amazing. Doc says, I know it feels like you're up against the wall, but in actuality, the wall is right in front of you, and he summons Pink Floyd's The Wall in attack mode. And Docs explains that when defense wall is in defense mode, all the monsters on the opponent's side of the field can only attack the wall. So Cyrus summons his Cycloid, which is a bicycle with an eyeball. And you know, if Professor Oak were here, Cyrus, he would be telling you that now is not the time to be using that card. Gate Guardian pisses all over Cyrus's bicycle and then pisses all over Cyrus for good measure, dropping Jaden and Cyrus's life points to 1700. The Paradox Brothers rhyme aggressively at Jaden and Cyrus, and then the episode ends with the announcer telling Jaden that if he doesn't make a move in the next minute, he'll be disqualified. What is it, Duel Links? Is there a timer? What's going on? Is he gonna get logged out of the game if he doesn't make a move? What's going on? And then it's to be continued. Ah, oh, I'm actually really invested in this one. Because not only, obviously, are there massive implications if Jaden and Cyrus lose, we also have the Paradox Brothers involved. The card game mercenaries. Almost did it. But what's gonna happen? Are Jaden and Cyrus gonna win the duel and be okay? How are they going to be able to defeat the tag team that once faced Yugi and Joey and lost? It's all up in the air. More than anything, I'm just waiting for Alexis to tear off Bastion's head when he makes one more smug comment. That's really why I'm invested in it. But yeah, that's the end of part one. Stay tuned for part two next week, where we find out who wins. And look, if they can write Chumley's dad out of the show, then every character is fair game, in my opinion. Just can't believe it. It's a massive loss for the Yu-Gi-Oh community, losing Chumley's dad. What did you think? Are you as terrified of the weird doll creatures that exist with in the confines of Duel Academy like I am? Do you also say f*** off to spiders? You're in good company if you do. Let me know what you reckon in the comments. And as always, I want to give a whopping great shout out to all of our Patreon pledges. You guys are spectacular. You guys are my tag team partner in the duel that is life. I appreciate all of your support, everything you've done for us. You, you guys make this possible. And I know I had a bit of a hiatus and I didn't want to have a hiatus, but I wouldn't have been able to come back uh, with as much strength without you guys. So I, I appreciate you being there and for being patient with me. Thank you. Until next time, get your collective games on. The only thing we're packing is some serious you know what, Jaden? You're right. We are packing some serious. D